I wanted to start off really handing it to Philip Owens from the USDA. All right. Thank you, Mike. And so this slide shows that, you know, 88% of the farms in the U.S. are categorized as small farms, which means they have less than $350,000 of sales at the gate. Um, the uh, adoption rate for technology is low. I think, one, there's not been a lot of research on it, but also I think a lot, not a lot of affordable options. And one thing that we really kind of focused around was this, um, there's this rule, the 5% rule was um, basically um, come from Danny Ken Kleinfelter. He's a former professor at Texas A&M. That said if you got a five percent increase in price a five percent decrease in cost a five percent increase in yield uh, you'll produce more than a hundred percent increase in net returns but the things that we can focus on with technology is decreasing costs and increasing yield i think we can accomplish those tasks and i think five percent is a low number i think we can do better and on the right you're you i wanted you to look at the um the adoption rate of technologies um the first is yield monitor maps, soil maps, 10% of small farms are using technology. So there's a, a large gap, unfilled gap of, of where we can approach that. And I think with all technology, what we're evaluating is, is it, does it work and is it affordable? And what's the ease of use? Because that all of, all of those barriers will affect adoption. And one of the first things that we worked on was um, tractor guidance. Um, it you know because we can reduce min in inputs and and minimize that that over applications in in places, and so he was manually driving, um, but he applied 42.9 acres of fertilizer on a 40 acre field, and to me that was thinking numbers like you know the number of passes, the number of fields, the number of years that is a lot of money, time, product, uh, fuel. So we got with. Um, an ag economist at the University of Arkansas, and we basically spatially mapped with someone driving versus auto steer. And so we saw 20 to 30 percent efficiency gains with auto steer, and we tested um, experience of drivers, but still no one got close to auto steer. And so we built this um, this tool called um, Tractor Guided Assistance. And it's, um, it's a tool that's hosted by the University of Arkansas. Um, and one of the big expenses was, the, was the, uh, the actual product. So if you use a John Deere or some other, um, you know, that comes with the tractor, there's an added expense to that. So I kept looking for ways that we could lower that expense. And so that's when I started working with Mike and his team, and we've evaluated the GeoNet. We haven't published on it yet. The, we're still doing some analysis, but I can tell you now we're not seeing any uh, differences in um, in any of the systems. So it's as equally as good as, as some of the other products that we've evaluated. Another um, area that we work on is um, digital soil mapping, as I maybe have mentioned. Uh, we basically create these soil maps. We did some electro electrical conductivity scans, which also um, we need high resolution with that. And and I'm uh, planning on trying to use GeoNet to link to my my um, electrical conductivity. But we drive these scans across the field. You can see the high density of points to get the electrical conductivity, uh, create the maps. And then the maps, we ultimately want to figure out how do we use it. We are also really investing in drones. And I think this is a technology that is continuing to grow. People are continuing to find use for it. Um, as Mike had mentioned, the spray drones, I think are huge, they're coming. So what we're doing is using some remote sensing to identify areas in the field that may need different applications or identify the weeds and then use the drones to go target that to minimize product, minimize time, minimize labor. And all of that requires these very precise geospatial locations because you want to hit your target. Uh, you got to know where your target is exactly, and you got to be able to hit that target exactly. And so that's been our focus. Um, we've got some other work that we're doing, but that's um, just a summary of some of the things that relate to, uh, to the RTK. Thank you, Philip. I was going to turn it over now to Joey to talk a little bit about some of the things that Philip talked about but actually in an applied way to actually uh, putting this on the farm and actually utilizing GeoNet in um, real applications around auto steering. Joey. 
Yeah, <clears throat> Philip did a great job explaining if you do not have a correction signal source like GeoNet provides, it really doesn't benefit as much. There is benefit, but having the repeatability to reduce input costs, because like Philip said, we can't control yields. In a bad year, we can control input costs. If we lower input costs, those are where you survive. In a bad year, a farmer you know, has to do whatever he can, but if the yields aren't there or mother nature, we just can't control it. So we're doing our best to find, keep finding affordable technology like we offer that'll work on new or old equipment. You know, we have an auto steering system or guidance system for every tractor, anything with the steering wheel and our guidance systems will even work on four wheelers side by side. And you can get RTK accuracy even on our guidance. Here's a return on investment. I mean, each place is a little different, but traditionally in the past, RTK systems plus subscriptions were 20 to 30,000 and plus a thousand a year. Well, that's not the case anymore. We have auto steering, our, the one that has the variable rate option is 7,000 and that includes GeoNet. And you're able to get even on a 50 year old tractor, one inch accuracy, repeatable, now guys are able to do some farming practices they weren't able to do to help survive that drought. Traditionally, RTK was made to look difficult. I mean, I can simplify it to a farmer. You're gonna have a set reference point that doesn't move. So now you're gonna be able to come back to that same line and have one inch accuracy year after year. Now you can do a lot more things and any farmer can do it. That's why partnering with GeoNet and being involved but yeah, we're all in the same boat. We're wanting to help everyone because it's not just ag, but that's what we specialize in. So um, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to, you know, express what our company does and how we kind of align with the USDA and what Philip does and what Mike's doing with GeoNet. It's, it's growing fast. And, yeah, thank you, Joey. Thank you. Yeah, I think the um, seeing that the technology can be used uh, really and pay payback within one season, I think, is an integral part of helping folks adopt it. Um, I think when the equipment's thirty thousand dollars, it becomes a real uh, head scratcher for our customers to 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 understand whether this is going to pay payback or not. But when you can pay it back in one season, um, and the upfront costs are lower it becomes a much easier value proposition. And that addresses a lot of the challenges of bringing precision ag to smaller farmers. So with that, Chris, could you tell us a little bit about what Agri Automation's doing? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, great to be a part of, uh, part of this and, and great to be a partner with, uh, with GeoNet as well. Um, our company specializes in, in, the, in several different systems we have uh, we have a retrofit system similar to what uh, Joey was describing with the steering, but uh, going a step further, the system comes out of Poland, uh, GoTrack, and it retrofits into practically any horticultural tractor. The uh, critical part with any form of autonomy um, has to be reliability uh, and accuracy. Uh, we're talking about sending a tractor that's completely unmanned out and it needs to be able to uh, make its way into the field and turn with absolute precision into a row space between two sets of trees and it needs to do this time after time after time reliably and without incident so that's where uh, having a precise and reliable network is absolutely critical and that's where GeoNet uh, has really um, stood out for us and that they could offer a solution that is uh, not only reliable and precise, but it's cost effective. Thank you, Chris. I was going to show um, a couple of the videos, one from the first video from the GoTrack uh, system, which is um, Chris uh, highlighted is a retrofit kit onto an existing um, tractor that offers full autonomy capability. So they add not only the steering kit that, that, that Joey highlighted, but also additional sensors to bring this tractor up to a fully autonomous um, state. 
you know, as you can see in the video, uh, the headland, the, the, the tractor is automatically lifting the mower, makes the turn, lowers it, and just continues it and works like this uh, for as long as the the, the uh, path has been recorded. And what we've seen uh, working together with the the um, work level of one centimeter accuracy every time. Um, I'll show the next video, um, which is uh, a video that is with Burrow and. Burrow is a, is a partner both with Agri Automation as well as GeoNet and doing some amazing innovative things around small robots that work in everything from uh, greenhouses to vineyards to uh, orchards. Um, again, very affordable technology. Uh, as you see in the video, we're, we're, we're coupling the, the Burrow together with tools like mowing and herbicide spraying, as well as uh, the traditional use of, of carrying produce and and fruit and and uh, and in likes of nurseries to pulling trailers and so there's a there's a whole host of different use cases with with products like Burrow where uh, it enables it's a swarm effect we're using a small electric um, robot so very very clean very uh, low cost uh, low operating cost um, and again with coupled with the GeoNet uh, solution uh, we've got the accuracy to send deploy a uh, swarm of these machines into the field uh, with reliability. So as a summary, before we go on to the q and I wanted to highlight that um, Precision Ag works. It's a scientifically proven to improve yields, lower input costs, and have tremendous benefit to the farmer. The challenge in the past has been affordability of equipment and the RTK signal itself. Um, those challenges are are largely resolved. So now I think the biggest challenge is, is what Joey highlighted, which is education. And that's why we're doing this webinar today and why uh, all three of us, uh, all four of us are engaged in so many activities to help um, you know, bring awareness that affordable solutions are here today and they can benefit all farmers from big to small. We also talked about the differences between semi-autonomous solutions and fully autonomous solutions and how both are important, both have a role to play in places with uh, reduced availability of labor and higher um, labor costs, fully autonomous is already starting to take impact in places like Australia and New Zealand, and that's an amazing thing to see. And that solutions that are farmer friendly, well tested and affordable are key to enabling and GeoNet itself is uh, open to work with any hardware software manufacturers that can help bring um, those kinds of solutions to marketplace um, we think that that is really a, a way to grow. Ease of use, as Philip said, super, super, super important. Um, and uh, ease of use means it, it needs to be out there uh, facing the farmer and working in the field. GeoNet, mind the sky.